When reviewing electromyographic resting activity, the first thing that we'll see is the sweep that was taken with eight muscles active. We have the two green lines, temporalis anterior right and left, masseter right and left, sternocleidomastoid right and left, and digastric anterior right and left. Now these labels can be changed uh, if you go into recording presets and that way if you decide to record different muscles and place the electrodes in different places these labels will be changed as well. Now the first thing that we do to review electromyographic data in the review mode is to click on the zoom button and that gives us our windows uh, in which we will that, that we will use to interpret uh, electromyographic recordings for whether it's rest or clench swallow etc. The windows are the EMG sweep here in the upper left hand corner, the summary or the numbers in the upper right hand corner, the zoom view, that's what we see anywhere that we move this vertical cursor in the sweep view is blown up down here in the zoom view. The muscle levels, these little pistons here uh, that indicate muscle activity at the point of this dotted line right here, and the averaged EMG. Now. What we're going to do first of all in review of resting muscle activity is to check for background electrical noise. Electromyography measures the electrical activity of muscles and in doing so may uh, pick up extraneous electrical noise. This can be caused by several different things. Uh, it can be caused by uh, not cleaning the skin before putting electrodes on, poor electrode placement, bad electrical connections, uh, a noisy power supply, a non-grounded power supply in your office, putting the electrodes over hair, etc. Electrical noise can be differentiated very easily from muscle activity. Uh, first of all, you will see uh, here in SCM left we have a noisy uh, channel. And what this shows is a solid, thick band of activity as opposed to these more normal resting levels here shown in the other muscles. This, when this thick band shows up, what you want to do is look in the zoomed view. If you see this sine wave, you notice how this muscle activity goes up and down, or this, I should say, this electrical activity goes up and down in a very regular pattern. That is indicative of electrical activity. United States uh, electrical power runs on a 60 cycle and most international um, electrical power runs on a 50 cycle so from 0 to 1 second we will see that there are actually 60 little spikes here and if it were uh, taken internationally there would be 50 so the spiking here is caused by background electrical noise as opposed to the more random firing uh, or more random looking pattern of actual muscle activity now if you see this in your resting activity, uh, you, you want to retake the trace um, during recording. If it's missed and you're now in the uh, review mode and you've already taken the trace and the ability to actually retake the trace is gone, the patient has left or what have you, as long as the electrode connections and everything was set up correctly, uh, BioResearch has designed a program called the Noise Buster that will Obviously, by seeing the electrical noise, you'll be warned there is noise there. Um, be able to address that in the future. But whenever we take our cursor and we actually mark an area to measure the muscle activity in that area, the noise buster actually goes in and finds that 60 cycle noise and cuts it out. Um, so as long as you still have a good electro, have good electrode connection and all your wires are plugged in correctly, you will still be able to record the muscle activity that is um, masked by that electrical interference, um, and it won't pose a problem to your EMG. Now, to review rest is fairly simple. Uh, muscles are either resting at a normal level, at an intermediate level, or at a hyperactive level. level. In the numbers here, we can see that the SCM right and left are recording at a normal level, uh, 0.8 microvolts and 1 microvolt, respectively. Um, the temporalis left, masseter left, and digastric right are in an intermediate range between 1.5 and 2 microvolts, and the temporalis right, masseter right, and digastric left are all considered by this clinician to be hyperactive, in other words, over 2 microvolts. Now, these microvolt settings are changeable if uh, the clinician believes that two microvolts is normal resting activity or three you can change the thresholds that change the colors here in these uh, 
in this display so that green will essentially indicate to your clinician normal, yellow would be a borderline condition, and red would be considered hyperactive.